Hello, people. We are live. Um, as per usual, my streaming device is just a little bit slow in giving me feedback on when I am live officially. So I'm just going to give my technology a minute before we get started here. Hello to everyone that is here already. Um, blessings out to you. Sending you so much love. I hope that you're having a great Saturday today. Um, I'm just going to, whoops share this video and make it public on my Facebook profile here and see if I can share it to my page. No, I'm going to give up on that. I don't think I can do it right now. <laughs> Hello, people. Welcome. Welcome back to Starseed Mission Support. Hi, Gavia. Uh, we have a really special Starsea mission support today. I'm going to be telling you guys about my baby Isa and my uh, human baby Kara is getting close. And so it really feels like <laughs> we are having twins at the moment. I'm really excited to share this heart's creation with you. And so we're going to just give it a couple of minutes while people are still hopping in live. I want to send out a warm and loving welcome to all of you that are tuning in here. Um, this is going to be the last Starseed mission support for a little while, I think, as I'm getting ready to birth our little Starseed here. Uh, I had some um, practice contractions <laughs> last night. <laughs> And so that was very exciting. Uh, I didn't get any practice contractions last time when I gave birth. So um, I really thought I was about to go into labor, but it also just felt, you know, not as intense as the first time. And I was like, we're not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> There's still so many things I have to get done. You know, we're not even fully unpacked yet. And so uh, I felt very happy that the contractions did subside in like five minutes or so. Those of you that have been mothers, you know about those Braxton Hicks, the practice con uh, contractions. Um, I was very happy to have some practice contractions though, uh, because um, it really got me into the headspace of, you know, preparing for birth. And uh, surprisingly or unsurprisingly, you know, that space feels very psychedelic to me when the uh lower chakras and the portal starts opening i mean i really start getting into an altered state and i started seeing the room like fluctuate kind of like you do when you're on mushrooms and um it felt like a very actually comfortable space <laughs> for me so um yeah, so I'm excited to kind of experience just actually how comfortable I am in that space and how much trust that I have built with my body that, you know, they didn't even really feel painful. And I just felt so ready. I felt so blessed to have a partner that, you know, I felt so safe around. And uh, it was really awesome to have a little practice. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, we're really hoping that, you know, she holds off for a couple more weeks, though, because we'd like to get unpacked a little bit more. Um, our bedroom furniture isn't here yet, and we needed a bigger bed because we are going to be, you know, with a baby and we have all these animals. And anyway, we just don't really feel fully landed yet. But I know that Kara probably already has decided on the astrological alignments that she's going to come in. So regardless of whether we're ready or not, you know, probably don't get that much say in, uh, you know, these kinds of cosmic alignments uh, of when people are born. So I'm just going to ride with it, but I feel really good and I'm feeling really excited to share with you guys about... Um, my starseed mystery school so i'm gonna dive right in what's gonna happen is i'll just tell you about 
you know, the mothership. I'm going to tell you about this school and, you know, what, what makes it so fascinating and multidimensional. Um, and then I'll probably take some questions towards the end if you have questions about the school and if it's right for you. Um, so I first received the words Earth Star Academy back in 2015. And I was um, at my ex-boyfriend's house. I was just hanging out journaling. And all of a sudden I drew this like eagle kind of symbol, um, kind of like this Egyptian bird, you know, the symbol for mystery school and knowledge. And then I wrote Earth Star Academy and that was the end of it. <laughs> that was all the information I got. Um, and at that point I had gone to um, the land in New Mexico and I just knew that I was supposed to build a starseed magic school. I didn't really know what that meant at that time. Um, and my guides told me that it was going to take seven years for me to go through the necessary training and activations to be able to fully anchor and give birth to this part of my mission. And so I didn't really give much thought about it um, because it told me it was going to take seven years. I just committed to living, you know, my life and um, following my guidance and whatnot. And that you know, became my book, I Am Starseed. You guys can read about that if you'd like, where I just followed, you know, the galactics and the earth. And I went on all these adventures and, you know, what did a lot of self-healing and turned into all of these different realms. And through all those experiences, I've put together kind of this uh, protocol for starseed activation and awakening and healing. And um, so when the Earth Star Academy started forming and coming together about a year ago, uh, I realized that the curriculum was kind of everything that I had learned either directly from the galactics or sideways. <laughs> and you guys know what sideways initiations look like in life, right? Where you think you're going through an experience and you think you're learning something, but really is the byproduct of those experiences that are the real learning experiences. So for example, when I had um, a, a shaman teacher who was meant to be my ayahuasca teacher, and instead of being an ayahuasca teacher that taught me anything about shamanism at all, I just ended up, you know, protecting myself and fighting off gray aliens and demons and basically remembering all of my shamanic skills because of him. Um, people could say that he was, you know, sending black magic to me or whatever it is. But at that point, I knew that I was just getting sideways training, which oftentimes greatly accelerates your growth, right? I mean, if you were to learn those things step by step in a linear fashion, it would probably take you many years to learn about entities and black magic and sovereignty. And in this situation, you only need one situation to learn all of those things very quickly. So had a lot of sideways initiations like that, initiations even like, you know, birthing Kara and birthing her into a different dimension. And all of those things culminated in all of the awareness and the information and also training involving uh, my guys telling me to go out into the world and just scanning energy, activating my psychic abilities to be able to perceive dimensional energy fields and things like that. Um, and so eventually all of that came together in this curriculum. And uh, launching in 2022 was really special because they told me it was going to be seven years. And of course, seven years from 2015 is 2022. And so I'm kind of just in awe of how there was a plan, you know, all along. And I was guided through this process that really most of which I wasn't totally aware of. You know, I knew that the Earth Star Academy was going to become a thing, but I didn't really fully understand exactly what it was going to be um, until basically a couple months ago when everything started coming together um, and the curriculum was finalizing and the streams of consciousness were coming in. And I'm just in absolute awe of what this mothership truly is. So in, a, in my understanding, there is a unified force of light beings, angelics, star seeds, indigos, light workers, whatever you want to call it, right? There is a unifying force, even truthers, people that are, you know, here to spread truth in the disclosure community, all people that are awakened, that have this desire to be of service to humanity, that have this drive to support and encourage and drive humanity in this positive direction. 
if you feel that vector inside of you, that desire to be of support, um, I would consider you a star seed. This is really, you know, whatever word you want to use to describe yourself, this is what we're operating with. And so essentially there's a unifying force um, and we all have sets of teams and guides and we all work together on some level. There's an intergenerational process to this where I've seen, you know, the first waivers, they came down onto the earth. And before that, you know, the starseed command or the starseed unity, um, guardian alliance, whatever you want to call it, this force, you know, we didn't, we couldn't see into the earth and to see exactly what was happening. We saw that there was a fall. We saw that humanity was calling for help and that there was an evolutionary situation that was happening, but we didn't know the exact situation down here on the earth, meaning we didn't see, you know, the exact kinds of mind control devices that were being used um, on the population or the specific chemicals that were used to po poison people. We didn't have any of those kinds of details. And so then the bravest and the most wise of all star beings incarnated first. These are the first waivers. And we have so much absolute awe and reverence and um, respect for the first wave star people, uh, many of whom really deeply feel, you know, confused. Like, did I actually do my mission? You absolutely did just by being here. Um, your job was really just to come down here and crack the foundations of the density. And just through being here, you know, we had eyes on the ground and many of you were, your job was to basically feed back information up uh, upstairs, I like to say. And through those uh, data points that you were sending up, we were able to create antiviral and more advanced genetic templates um, so that, you know, when the future generations of starseeds were being born like myself and the future generations, we had antiviral uh, coded in our DNA and in our consciousness, which protected us from falling asleep and into levels of amnesia. A lot of the previous, um, the previous generations of starseeds just kind of had to uh, withstand. And so this is why I have a lot of respect and love for all of our first waivers. You guys are really the bravest and strongest. And um, even if you feel like did I even do my mission? I don't know if I accomplished my mission. Just know that by choosing to incarnate during that time, you are an absolute hero in the eyes of everyone. Uh, and we all know that you succeeded in your mission because the future generation starseeds like myself and many of the people in, that were born in the 90s and the 80s. And of course, you know, the next generation like Kara and beyond, we're only able to be here shining uh, on this level that we're, we're at. Uh, because of the devotion um, and selfless service that you have given. So knowing that there is an intergenerational connection and that we're all operating in unity and together, um, it became apparent that this um, signal was coming through from actually the Guardian Alliance uh, Starseed Collective um, mothership, I'm getting chilled, is an actual place where we are connected. That's why many of you recognize my energy and recognize my face or my songs is because we already uh, know each other from upstairs and from other lifetimes where we prepare to come to earth on other missions as well. Again, in this uh, universal mission, really what's occurring on the earth is a fractal reflection of a bunch of other things that are happening on a universal level. And so the Earth Star Academy is a is a so the first dream I had about this space, um, I was shown that it is a star being training facility. So imagine you get sent to Earth and you have a mission. And of course, when you get to where you're going, you get an orientation. And so this is kind of like what that is, where, you know, this information is now synthesized for you to get really lucid transmission of exactly what it is that we're doing here. And that is the first class of the foundational level. The first um, course, the first official course of our school is called the Starseed Mission Briefing. And here we talk about lucidity and becoming fully um, aware and awake to your mission on Earth. And just coming into full lucidity means that we're fully accepting 
all the things that we think to be true. And we're starting to really address all the parts that are in doubt and confusion and questions are inner knowing uh, because it's out there and it's kind of crazy, right? I think that that's the main reason people like watching my videos is because of that certainty that I feel. And I think that that certainty that I have inside of me is really a gift that I'm meant to share because I'm really fortunate to have had a lot of physical experiences that confirm my inner knowing. Things like being literally given land by my Andromedan uh, star family. And I believe that that land is really a place where we will be uh, collaborating and meeting and even creating um, landing pads for interdimensional uh, connection at a future moment in time. And so all of those experiences helped me come into this level of lucidity where now I'm able to basically act as a mirror and transmit these frequencies of integration and acceptance and trust in our inner knowing. And I think that the most major code or transmission or intent of this whole school is for each person to have the support they need to come into alignment with their own inner knowing, their own inner sense of connection with their self, their own inner remembrance of who you are on a soul level. We talk about amnesia and how it's really not normal for us to not remember who we are and how there are ways for us to begin to remember who we are. And we you know, go through that entire process in the Earth Star Academy. The school was created to specifically support star season light workers in this process of remembering and we talk about we break down the false matrix and all of the interdimensional and psychological and emotional ways um, mind control and different energies serve as a 3d and beyond frequency fence that's really here to imprison human souls right and when we begin to break those things down and really talk about the false matrix in this lucid kind of way, again, we provide um, this um, certainty and this comfort to accept the things that you already intuitively understand but are having a hard time fully anchoring into because they're so out there and, you know, there are people around you that don't see the world, you know, maybe quite as deeply as we do. And so we're also going to talk about the organic matrix of living light and how fallen consciousness is literally a geometric um, uh, geometric state that we are learning to reconnect through our own process of that uh, internally. We talk about the energetic prison on Earth and how it is, you know, a bio spiritual um, abuse system. And then we go into talking about various negative alien agendas fallen angelic races. Now, we don't actually go into those things extremely deeply. What we do is give you basically an overview of what has happened um, on a universal level so that you can have that clarity understanding on your mission. The whole point of it is to come into integration and alignment to be able to step forth on your mission and not to fill your mind with mental information. And so I find that galactics are giving us just enough information through this for us to have that stability and certainty without focusing on it too much because the focus of this is ultimately coming into ourself and so we talk about the multi-dimensional self the star self our earth self how we have um, locales of consciousness and you know 12 dimensionalities and how in every one of those dimensionalities we have an aspect of ourself that carries different knowledge and wisdom and expertise and all of those parts of ourself are here to serve um, a central purpose. And this school is really built holographically to support in your internal remembrance of those parts of you. Um, just to give you an example, you know, I have a 5D aspect in the Pleiades that is actually an architect um, and city planner. Um, having come from a galactic place where I have experienced galactic ascended civilizations where the society is built upon qualities of love and creativity and expansion, you know, we're bringing that here. And so when I'm seeing into the future, I see that, you know, in a decade, two decades, whenever it's in great alignment, um, when humanity is ready to build these new cities, these are the skills that are going to be able to come through at that time to build galactic civilization on earth. Now, obviously, 
Um, okay, let's just continue with the example for a second. I have a 7D aspect in Andromeda that is a light field geneticist. This is a part that understands life force and geometry and how cosmic energy moves through life forms. And this is a part that I use, um, that I connect to a lot, that I draw on the expertise and knowledge of that part in my healing sessions, in my grid work sessions, because that part has understanding of you know, universal architecture. And so there are various different dimensionalities of myself that I now remember that I understand will come into collaboration moving forward. But perhaps the most riveting part of me um, altogether, and I really am just a huge fan of the earth self, which is my earth human personality that really don't get enough credit in the new age uh, community. So the earth self is actually the superhero of our entire system. Our earth self is the one that understands earth time and how, um, you know, reality materializes and manifests in the physical reality. And so this is how we can gain the wisdom of timing and how we can actually begin to make incremental improvements and build in a foundational way, you know, instead of trying to do things out of order, you know what I mean? Like you get this vision where you're supposed to build a healing center and then you just start trying to do things, but it doesn't work because we're actually trying to do something that we're actually supposed to do in the future. And because we're trying to do that thing, we're missing out on doing the thing we're meant to do right now. That's going to organically bring us to the next uh, locale in time that allows us to bring these bigger visions into fruition. So as you can see, this holographic space is meant to support and arrange all of these parts of ourself, bring alignment to all these parts of ourself so we can holographically embark on our mission. It's a very multidimensional process. Um, I personally haven't really seen anything like this curriculum um, anywhere. And I, I really just think that it's really magical. I'm not saying that because I made it because really I didn't, I didn't make it. I just <laughs> channeled um, I was just preparing myself to receive it and to be able to understand it through my personal experiences. But these are the things that have brought me to where I am now. And so in this first class, the Starseed Mission Briefing, we also talk about the Christos Realignment Mission and how the Starseed Collective has actually been on this mission for a really long time, beyond this lifetime, beyond the Earth, and how it this mission that we're on ties in with the universal a reality at this time. Um, and again, these things are meant to empower us um, with, uh, our, with our mission, but in a really grounded way, because we're really meant to <clears throat> enjoy our mission and enjoy our experience on earth. And um, the way that this curriculum is set up is that it's really meant to you know, really support our human self in the healing and the maturation process because our higher dimensional selves don't really need any help, right? They already have access to all the wisdom, maturity, information, knowledge that we could possibly need. And the part of us that really needs help is the earth self that has no idea how to make sense of everything. It's no idea how to integrate is messed up from the false matrix, from all the toxicity and the trauma and the intergenerational trauma and just being you know, harassed by the media, like pummeled all the time. And so the earth self is really what this school was created for to support its healing, its restoration, um, and its lucidity and its clarity and its confidence at its moving into the next phase of its mission. So the next class in the foundational level is um, about living your mission. And here we begin talking about ego training, which is when we are learning to master our earth self and gain the qualities of spiritual and emotional maturity to be able to be stable enough to actually allow our human self to be the command center or the nexus board between all of our higher dimensional selves um, and be the captain of our ship. So this is, you know, the defining role of our human self that is just gets totally lost because we're so busy wanting to know about our other dimensions. So we talk about mastery and what the path of mastery is. And the interesting thing is that, you know, I've been in the new age community for a while. And the more that I look around, the more confused I am. 
because there's some simple foundational things that are core to my experience. Things like, you know, divine love and just being in union with God and the sensation of divinity and feeling nourished by life itself. And very rarely do I really hear people talking about this, devoting our time, devoting our life to this. Everything seems to be very uh, superficial. And so then I started to discover this amazing thing, I guess, called the New Age Glass Ceiling. And just last week, Shane had a session with this uh, man who, you know, he was when I when I talked to him, he was somebody that was really on a spiritual path and he woke up and he just wanted to know about himself. I wanted to know about his superpowers. You know, he'd been super tuned in since he was a little kid. And unfortunately, he got caught by the new age uh, net, the new age fish net. And so he found himself in these communities that, you know, talked about implant removals and things like that. But unfortunately, because um, these things were a part of the new age false ceiling, it very easily spun him into a deep um, ungroundedness where, you know, people can get obsessed with different kinds of spiritual stuff that is very ungrounded and very unhuman. And so I actually, through that experience, you know, this person's life was literally ruined. And I looked around in our spiritual community and I realized that there is mass, you know, energy siphoning um, on a lot of levels. Of course, it's another a frequency fence, right? Of course, there's a net to catch the people that are waking up. And it just made me really angry because it's one thing to trick people, you know, with the TV and different kinds of things. But it's another thing to use people's hunger for spirituality itself as a way to deceive them, as a way to um, stunt their growth and to siphon and to harness their their energy. And so I was really upset by this, but I also just saw just how hyenas and how serious this situation was. Um, and so I'm, <laughs> I'm really perceiving the Earth Star Academy as a like a, a new age detox almost like we're going to talk about spiritual stuff, but we're going to give you, you know, these essential teachings that bring us into ourself and the core essence of our spiritual path on Earth, which is attuning to our sense of divinity and our own soul's essence. And there are specific tools and practices we can use, but ultimately is about putting our sense of self in the driver's seat, putting our own higher self and our connection to source and to God and our devotion to being of service to humanity in the driver's seat. And when we do that, we realize that the love begins to rearrange our body and begin to heal ourselves in different ways where we then are actually healing our human self instead of throwing our human self in the garbage we're actually empowering and maturing and becoming you know a mature human being and embodying true signs of mastery like patience kindness creativity all of those things that are you know so important and vital on our spiritual path um so the next class that we have in the foundational level is meditation, journeying, and higher sense perception. So our um, understanding of meditation is that it's a nexus point between our human self and the eternal and the infinite, between our consciousness, our soul, and our body, and basically between all dimensionalities of ourself. And so our way of um, practicing meditation is by moving and learning how to shift our brainwave state from being a more active brainwave state to a more receptive brainwave state. So we don't do a lot of visualization. We more allow um, our system to completely let go. We're working on moving into the yin and the receptive areas of our mind to be able to receive um, ourself and cosmic information and healing and all of those things. And so we go through a simple practice where we actually build up our capabilities of meditation from a very simple practice and over seven different meditations, we're building up our technique and building up our ability to move into stillness and create space for cosmic love to be touched, <laughs> to be accessed, because that's all it is. You know, we are all already inherently divine 
And all we have to do is learn how to basically get out of the way and to access and touch that force and be touched by it. And so um, we learn to do that. We will have a, an infinite source of empowerment and energy and guidance and healing to nourish us on our, on our path. So journeying is interesting because we only learn <clears throat> kind of the beginning technique of journeying and the foundation level. Journeying is basically our ability to shift our consciousness into different dimensionalities and different realms. Usually, you know, this practice is given in um, traditional shamanism, where you're essentially accessing other dimensionalities for the purposes of healing, acquiring knowledge, acquiring guidance. And so it's basically utilizing the scientific truth that our consciousness is quantum and has access to infinite locales and information and being able to basically apply that science internally to access our own higher dimensionalities and receive guidance. This has been an indispensable tool in my own life. Basically, anytime I feel challenged or uncertain, I will just journey and connect in with my own highest self with source and you know higher vantage points will give you clarity and our ability to receive information internally is the most important i think that that's the most important thing in this whole curriculum is that um yeah it's that um so while you can get sessions from people and they can tell you about stuff like, oh, you're from Andromeda, you're from Sirius, like none of it has any substance. It doesn't really help you. You know, it's cool to know mentally, but until you have an internal experience, until you feel that part of you, until you can basically merge consciousness and access your skills and memories and powers and knowledge from those parts of you, you can't actually functionally con connect um, and functionally express those parts of you. So it's really basically useless. This is why I don't really go for readings. I don't really care for other people telling me about myself. I've not really ever had any of those sessions. You know, I've been gifted a couple of sessions throughout my life and they've been helpful, but ultimately the only things that gives me this kind of um, depth and substance is my own connection and gnosis of myself. And this should be normalized. Okay, and this is another way the new age is really tricky. Um, you know, a lot of people are just there to make money or to make their own lives better. And, you know, I'm all for making your lives better. I think everyone should do what they love and be compensated for it. But, um, you know, there's just a lot of fluffy bullshit <laughs> out there. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, I really believe that everyone has access to this information. We should normalize saying that and accepting that and it's okay if you have no idea who you are because we've been born into this soul prison which normalizes amnesia but also know that it's not impossible and it's not hard and it's not you know <laughs> it's just really beautiful outside there's like everything's like fogged up so um i've never seen the forest fog up like that so it just caught my mind but it's not extremely hard to connect to yourself. You just have to know what the tools are and you have to carve out time to intentionally do it. And so this is really what we guide people through inside of the Earth Star Academy is to access our own inner power and our own inner knowing. I've worked with thousands of clients at this point. We just completed a medicine container with 400 women and feedback was you know, incredible because the most brilliant gift of all is for people to truly feel empowered inside of themselves. And the one thing that I kept hearing from women inside of this medicine container was that they gain the skills and the tools to really engage in a lifelong relationship that is deepening um, inside of themselves. And I think that this is what we need on the planet right now. We need to all just deeply connect in with ourself. Um, the next part of this Foundation class is higher sense perception. So another way uh, to say that is subtle sense perception. This is our ability to basically sense super subtle energy. If you are an empath, um, you know, there's a lot of disempowering information about empaths. Um, 
you know, people say, oh, you know, it's like a curse, blah, blah, blah. But really, every human being is empathic. We all have the capability to perceive subtle information. The fact that we have to uh, make this special word called empath and make it seem like this special thing actually tells us that there's something wrong with human society that we have. It's kind of like if everybody has eyes, but nobody can see and only certain people are born with the ability to see. Now, obviously, we're going to be like, Everybody is supposed to be able to see there's an issue with the society. And so we're learning to use this open window of empathy to realize that we can actually train our ability to empathize and to actually be able to pick up information that is even subtler than emotions, um, things like thoughts, things like our interdimensional genetic template, things like cosmic signals and, and true energy. And this, of course, helps us gain discernment because when you can tell the difference between sudden, subtle, subtle frequencies, um, all of a sudden it's not really about what people say. I mean, some people can say some really spiritual stuff, but when you tune into the vibration, you know, is the vibration of pure divine source love present? And this is something that, you know, is obviously very important for us to be able to um, feel and discern on our own. Um, the other reason that cultivating our subtle sense abilities are really important, especially if you're a healer, is that, you know, you will be able to just scan your your client and figure out exactly what's going on inside of their systems, what emotions are stored, where these things are not things that I hear, my guides tell me my ear, I can basically just scan somebody's energy bodies because I've trained myself to be able to perceive subtle, subtle, subtle energy. And this is also what allows me to basically um, oracle very fine frequencies of energy. So it's a cool skill um, that we learn to cultivate inside. Um, the next foundational class is uh, full spectrum self-healing. This is probably the most important class in the foundational level. We really learn, you know, all the dimensions of how to embark on a self-healing journey. These simple skills help us to heal not only our human traumas, our mom and dad traumas, our abandonment traumas, all of those things, but are, are the same skills that allow us to heal interdimensional traumas, uh, astral abductions, experimentation, genetic manipulation, past life stuff, galactic stuff. You know, there's all sorts of stuff out there. Um, and I find that... Um, there's a lot of sensationalism in around this stuff. Uh, you know, we're just going to learn, we're going to learn deeply how to be in presence and um, channel this magnificent healing force that is divine love, true divine love. We're going to learn how to embody true divine love and really become a force of divine love in this world. The world doesn't need somebody yelling about pedophiles and how Fauci is a liar. What we need are people that are embodied in this connection with source so that love literally just radiates off of us and swallows everything that's evil and dark or whatever back into wholeness. And that begins inside of our own body. And we all know that a lot of our assignments are kept inside of our own body. A lot of our assignments are kept into our own body, meaning, you know, some of the intense stuff, like if you feel like you've been abducted, then that abduction sensation is a feeling of, you know, ultimate creational violation. And those energies can connect out into lifetimes um, in planets that have been har harvested or entire realms that fell into the phantom realm. And when we learn how to channel divine love, we learn how to begin to heal our galactic lineages and the universal construct, which is really what a lot of our mission is um and without these foundational skills you know we're really just delusional and ungrounded and so we learn uh you know ego training of creating self-positive virtues learning various techniques that um, allows us to access the dimensional spaces inside of our own body allows us to access the distortions in our own light body learn how to heal those things through our awareness um, through only the tools that we have inside of our own body and we learn to heal soul fragmentation we learn to do ancestral healing on ourselves. 
And we learned to heal various consciousness-based viruses that were installed through the false matrix. We begin talking about sexual healing, but we don't go very deep into it because we do in the intermediate classes. Um, and that um, is a very whole self-healing system that will basically carry you into healing all of the denser galactic universal stuff that you know fascinates <laughs> the starseed community um, in the foundational level we also have a um, chakra class but we're really engaging from a bio spiritual anatomy perspective we do um, the nine chakras but also the dantian system and we also like we really talk about the chakras from a creational level as in how they interact in your anatomy in your light body with the fabric of reality itself and then we go into a detox and vessel optimization class which pretty much wraps up the foundational level and then then we go into the intermediate levels and the advanced levels and um yeah, these things, um, if you're here, if you're wanting to be a healer, the galactic shamanism courses are really built for you because here we're really breaking down skills of, you know, interdimensional travel and accessing higher dimensional energies using source, original source frequencies for healing, um, working with implants and soul level fragmentation and all sorts of, you know, things like that. And you'll realize that the reason why I don't just teach those things anymore is because, you know, our human self needs to be fully supported and fully grounded and fully healed before we just dive into those things, uh, because this is how people can get stuck in delusion and paranoia. And I've seen just a lot of that. You know, if we see a light worker or a healer that's been inside of a certain quadrant of the new age community and has made no progress in their human life for years that is something that should be concerning um, because i think that there's no such thing as somebody that has only a career or only a life in the new age society i think that star seas are meant to have our boots on the ground i think that we're all meant to have you know a, a series or a, um, a holistic a resume of things that we're meant to do and so even though i'm making these videos online i'm communicating to the star seeds you know a lot of my mission is actually anchored in humanity and i'm writing books for you know people and i'm working on healing solutions for earth problems and you know if all the star seeds were just intermingled together and stuck together then none of us would actually be facing the right direction and so i know that a lot of this new age trap is here to basically again hijack and trap star seeds and i feel like on a certain level the earth star academy is you know a detox from that because again i love my human self we actually go into um new earth entrepreneurship in the intermediate levels which is really exciting because we're talking about creation mechanics and how our human bodies are built to um, literally transform cosmic creation energy into form. And so when we use the original templates of creation to actually create something that is human in 3D, we begin to create the new reality, which is like the most exciting thing to me. Like that is why I'm here on earth right now. I didn't come here to go to festivals and play with crystals, even though I did do those things. It was really fun. I came here to literally apply cosmic geometry and cosmic architecture through my human body to create new systems that literally creates a new civilization from the ground up on this planet and that's kind of what we're getting to you know from the perspective all the way up into the angelic realms of how this situation started where pedophiles come from why the universe fell and all of those things and so um this is the uh, really the the makeup of the Earth Star Academy. I am so honored to um, kind of bring this this forward because it really is for all of us. Like this school, um, it is $89 a month. Um, it's really nothing compared to what a lot of people charge for this kind of curriculum. What else is included is live calls. And so I do a few live healings. I do weekly live Q&As, 
and it's only going to grow as we continue to expand. But really, you know, um, that energy exchange, so it's pretty much going directly to supporting the mission on this land we are, where we are building a galactic conference center for us to eventually be able to heal the Earth's grids enough to be able to materialize beings from other dimensions, essentially, which is going to take a little while, <laughs> okay? Um, because, you know, there's just so much damage to the Earth's grids that a lot of things can't happen until we can fully um, help the Earth um, to be able to hold certain levels of higher dimensional energy. This is why the pyramids and a lot of pyramids were built, right? After the fall of Atlantis, a lot of pyramids were built to help the Earth stabilize and rebuild its light body. And so at this phase of our mission, we're basically meaning to do the same thing of building massive um, structures around the planet that support cosmic energy in coming into the earth and rebalancing and rebuilding certain stargate systems that have been hijacked and certain new ley line systems that need to be installed in order for the earth to actually pull in and process the level of cosmic consciousness that we all need it to in order to have certain realities made manifest here on earth so i hope that all makes sense um I'm really obviously super stoked about uh, the birth of this project. Um, I also want to say that the space is very holographic, meaning the, um, yeah, meaning that, you know, the space, um, you, when you sign up, even if you don't watch any of the videos and you don't come to any of the lives, the space is actually holographically interacting with you and people experience this is because the mothership is a literal space. <laughs> it's a physical thing in interdimensional spaces. And so the mothership technology begins to work with our DNA and begins to activate us and people start feeling like they're on mushrooms a little bit. It begins to activate, they get hot flashes. You know, these are all normal parts of, you know, what you're getting is really this light technology, this chamber, this activation chamber, and what I call the mothership. So Athena says, no support for me on disability. That's okay. Thank you. And so, yeah, understand that, you know, you don't have to subscribe with physical money if, and you don't have to receive the mothership in a physical way either, if you are not um, able to at the moment financially, because, you know, all of the um, information that I share in the school can be found in sparse nuggets on my YouTube channel that is available for free. It's just that, you know, this system took me a lot of time to organize and film. And so, um, you know, the energy is exchange is there to support right uh, energy um, movement. And I think that actually, um, yeah, I mean, I have invested in myself in a lot of different ways. And I like even when I have support teams like movers, I will always pay them like twice as much as they want, um, as they ask to be charged just because I respect human creation energy. And I want people to be paid for what they are worth. And I don't want slavery. And I don't want taking advantage of people's energy to be a thing anymore. And so I am somebody that continues to generously share my energy um, with others. And I feel that it's important for us to value each other. And so $89 a month is like a yoga studio membership. And it's really for what you're getting and the level of activation and healing that you'll be receiving from the space, you will quickly feel. I mean, there are people that reach out to me that want to donate, you know, more because they feel like they're getting a lot out of it. So now I am going to receive questions. If you have any questions about um, Isa, somebody says, can I take mushrooms? <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, at some point you don't really need to take mushrooms. It says, I, I should be used to this feeling of space. It feels like being on mushrooms. <laughs> can you take mushrooms? You can take mushrooms. I don't think we need to take mushrooms uh, because I'm pretty much, you know, connected interdimensionally and when we learn to plug our light body back into source and we learn to channel higher dimensional energy through our body we don't really need any 
substance anymore because everything is uh, out there and everything's right there in front of us and, in, and within us already. So, yeah. No questions? Waiting for some questions. So inner child, do we do inner child work? So of course, um, we do inner child work in the self-healing class. And not only do we do inner child work, we do parts work. So we really learn how to engage with all parts of ourself, not just our inner children, but of course our inner teenagers and our inner rebellion, uh, rebel and our inner um, bitch and hurt person, you know, <laughs> learning to identify all the different wounded and fragmented parts of ourself. Christina says, do we do hypnosis work? So we learn how to journey and we learn how to get into the states of hypnotic trance. Um, and, you know, my husband, Shane, does offer support with hypnosis work, but we really want to teach you how to access those dimensionalities of your consciousness um, so that you can access higher dimensionalities without, you know, needing to be hypnotized. Okay. Um, how long do we have to decide? I mean, there's no timeline because the school is on an open subscription basis. So you can join now, you can join in six months. It's going to get better as you know we go. So um, there's actually no real hurry. Um, I have a question and the only person I could ask is about menstruation. I just recently changed my paradigm surrounding it. So I would love to receive your question about menstruation. I'm interested to know what you're curious about. So how does this academy apply to those of us who are older, 70? So it depends on, you know, what you are looking for. If you're looking for vibrational support, um, you know, we do have a Facebook-like social media app in the back of our platform and people can add each other as friends. We can post on this thing and make friends and make community. Um, if you want to work on bioregenesis, I have another client in her 70s who started to work on age regression, um, you know, through working with different techniques and accessing higher dimensional energy. So it really depends on what you want to experience um, and what you're looking for as far as support goes. What we offer at the school is lucidity training, training and healing, support and healing, support and community. Um, and these are the different ways that we support the Starseed mission. And if you need support in any of those ways, you are welcome to receive those things from the system. Do we learn a structured format for working with dragon energy in the galactic shamanism portion? So we do work with the dragons a lot, but really the, the dragon teachings come in the creation mechanics classes because the dragons are the keepers of the original knowledge of creation. And so we um, learn about the knowledge that they hold and we receive that uh, knowledge in the intermediate and advanced levels of the school. So do you have anything to say on the spiritual aspect of menstruation? Do you use menstrual blood for any spiritual reasons? I feel wrong about dumping my blood in conventional products or down the drain. So um, I have been pregnant to full term twice in the last three years. And so I barely have had my period for three years. And so I don't really even remember. But before that, um, there are these Taoist practices that I am connected to where we can learn to cease our menstruation. Uh, the reason why we want to do that is to recycle the blood and to basically save our eggs and to extend um, our life and to just save our life force and not allow that life force to come out and be dumped out of our body at all. So I'm more um, interested in those practices um, when I do have my menstrual cycle return after the baby, you know, I will be going back to those practices. Um, uh, yeah, and I do feel like, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like dumping blood in conventional ways down the drain. This is really about your desire to be in reverence to life itself, right? And so there's so many ways we um, contain our life force energy and honor our own life force energy. So if we are 
intentional about how we live our life, how we spend our time, how we treat our body, how we treat life around us, then, you know, we're filling a need, filling a desire to live in alignment with our true integrity and our true desire to fully love and revere life itself. So that's really the essential energy here. Um, so if you want to, um, you know, honor your life force, um, there's so many ways to do it. And, you know, one of the ways is, you know, I guess by repurposing your blood, but there's so many other ways that we can practice that in our life as well. What is a good way to work on birth trauma specifically? So a few things. I think that journeying is a really good way. Hypnotic work is a really good way. Um, breath work is a really good way. And um, ultimately, the biggest shortcut to any kind of healing work is building our reservoir of self-love. Because when we have you know, a lot of love in our field, it actually begins to just heal everything that is arising. All right. What do you, where do you see the world heading within the next two years in regards to ascension? Um, I don't really think about the world in regards to ascension so much because that depends on every single one of us. That's why I focus on staying in my lane and working on myself. I know that in the next two years, my own personal ascension um, is going to be, you know, a lot of grounding, a lot of really sinking into the truth of who I am and what I'm here to do in my life. I'm, I just hit my Saturn return. And so um, I feel like the Earth Star Academy is really here to hold a specific group of star seeds in truly landing in our true self inside. And so when we realize that we are the agents of change and we are the agents of new earth materializing, and it's really up to every single person to put in their best effort, um, it takes away this pressure of guessing because the future is really not written yet, right? It really depends. It's like if all of us just sat on our ass, then very little is going to change. But if we all found our lane and just devoted ourselves on a daily basis to um, you know, progressing into ascending in our own life, then we're going to get further than we can imagine. Will there be personal sessions where you can be, you can, where you can help uh, include it along with the course? So at the moment, you can um, work with my husband who offers quantum hypnosis sessions, their healing sessions. I myself will not be offering sessions until, um, the fall because I'm getting ready to birth a baby and I'm respecting her request to not do any personal sessions because she is very sensitive. And so to um, honor our space, I'm not currently offering sessions, um, but essentially in the fall, I'll only be offering sessions to people in the intermediate and advanced levels. And so, um, you know, it'll take you a couple months to get through the foundational level. And at that point, um, I will be coming back to do sessions. I will be having, you know, possibly several other facilitators on there as well, but I haven't really fully figured out, you know, how to incorporate that into the system yet. Um, do you have many people that find your work helpful that are not or aren't sure if they are star seeds? So again, I want to iterate my definition of a star seed. Okay, there's two things. One. You feel a spark of divinity in your heart and this reverence and love for life itself. You love creation. You feel the love you have for source divinity, for God, and that, that, that God has love for you. And from that spark, you have a desire to help. You want to support humanity. You want to be of service in some way. So if you have those two things inside of your system, if you feel those two things, then I would consider you a starseed. Okay, do we learn about the Fae? Um, so in the Galactic Shamanism container, um, we learn about accessing, you know, all other dimensionalities for um, beings that are supportive to our journey. So the Fae, Sasquatch is in there, galactic beings are in there, elemental beings are in there. And so um, I don't think that we learn specifically about the Fae, but more how we can access and open our consciousness to connect with whatever force that we resonate with inside of ourself. And so in that way, you know, these things are things. I mean, for me, 
my shamanic experience is very intimate and personal. I don't read on the internet about things. I don't watch other people's YouTube video. I just go into nature and I connect in myself. I receive all of the information that I need organically. And this is what we are in training and supporting people in doing and trusting our own abilities to do those things. And by the way, you guys do not need the Earth Star Academy, right? If you can't afford it or whatever. I mean, I got here without any help. And so um, I know that anyone, nobody needs me. Nobody needs the Earth Star Academy. It's just a support system that is here. The ultimate support sy system is yourself and your inner connection that is, you know, right there, right there in your heart. You just have to trust yourself. You just have to believe in yourself and you have to be guided by the love that's inside of you. And that's all you need. Trust yourself, trust God, trust the love inside of you to take you where you need to go and absolutely throw yourself into that. Absolutely commit to that fully. If you need help committing, the Earth Star Academy is here, but you don't need me to tell you these things. I'm not the ultimate authority on any of these things. Um, I'm not, you know, going to pretend like you need me for any reason. <laughs> I'm just a pal. I'm out here. I've been called to create this thing for those who can benefit from it, but I'm not going to get it twisted. Y'all don't need me, okay? All right. So, do 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 do. Okay, so that seems like all the uh, questions that we have. Somebody asked about, will you still do live classes when Kara comes or are you going to take a break? So I imagine I'll probably be, you know, off from doing lives for at least two weeks, maybe three weeks. But after that, I will be back. I mean, the lives are, you know, really enjoyable for me. They're not you know, energy consuming. The Q&As are so fun. It's really fun to come together. You know, that community space in the back, the little Facebook-like um, thing we have on our platform is really fun. Um, and it's just such a good vibe to have a bunch of people that are, you know, honest and, you know, here to be um, honest with ourselves and engage in our self-healing and do all the things. Um, so um, it's a good vibe when we come together. It's really fun. People ask good questions and it's really easy for me to do. So um, question, I find that my physical pain and emotional pain is hindering my spiritual growth. I find it very difficult to remain devoted. Will the school help? I want to say absolutely. The self-healing class is going to revolutionize your world because you're going to realize that that physical pain and emotional pain, not only is it not a hindrance, but it's your greatest teacher. Our pain and our suffering, you know, there wouldn't be that suffering and that pain in you if an equal or greater force of love was also inside of you, okay? And so our pain and our emotions, they teach us and they train us to connect to that expanse of love that we can actually bring in. And so what this means is that the next, the next phase of your spiritual growth is about recognizing and connecting and embodying the great love that you truly are and that's really what the self-healing class is all about is teaching us how to really embody this great infinite wellspring of love that is the healing force that carries us through any level of healing no matter what it is from the simplest you know simplest things you know maybe my mom ignored me when i was a child or, you know, I got abducted and experienced horrendous things on some other planet with reptilians, like whatever it is, um, our pain uh, becomes our teacher in experiencing the truth of our infinite love inside. So I, I really do believe that the school will help if healing is something that you are um, very interested in doing, because, you know, ultimately, that's my greatest love is by it's sharing um, these teachings of self-healing with others. So on that note, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. If you would like to check out the school, um, the link is earthstar.academy, and the link is also in the description box. Um, I'm definitely so excited to birth this school. 
Yeah, of course, Kina. Thank you so much for sharing. And of course, you will find that I'll say this often. I don't really say anything that people didn't know already. <laughs> I think that my job is to just say things that people already know. And because they hear somebody else say it, they're like, oh, okay, I'm not crazy. And that's literally, you know, what this school is. Um, that's why nobody needs me. Okay. <laughs> you already know. You already know the things. And if you want to, if you want to share some uh, energy with me for putting in effort, um, building this thing to help you remember and believe in yourself, you know, I will help you believe in yourself. And that's basically what I do. Um, how do you heal your womb to conceive? I know someone that is looking for information on this. Um, you know, again, this is a multifaceted conversation, but um, essentially I would you know, have them go through the self-healing class and the foundational level. And then we will go into the intermediate level where we learn the spiritual mechanics of our creational uh, template, which includes our womb, but also includes our cosmic Dantian and our heart, um, uh, our heart Dantian and our lower Dantian and through um, understanding, you know, past lives and shamanic connections and interdimensional energies and all of those things, we can learn to heal our womb and learn to uh, transit souls across dimensions, which I just think is the coolest superpower ever. Um, so if someone is looking to understand or to heal their womb, that's definitely one of my specialties. We just held a healing the womb container for 400 women and the feedback was absolutely incredible. People had life-changing healings, you know, repeatedly um, over and over. And it really filled me up with so much joy to witness that. So on that note, thank you so much for tuning in live. I really hope to see you inside the mothership. You might not hear from me here on YouTube for a little while. Um, I'll make an announcement at some point when I'm ready, when Care Bear makes it here earth side. I'm feeling really good. I was just saying in the beginning of this video that I had some practice contractions last night and it really just made me realize just how confident and peaceful and comfortable I feel in that space of birth. I mean, I start feeling very psychedelic. The walls were shifting kind of like, you know, on mushrooms or something. And I just felt so empowered and present and, and I felt a complete trust in my body. Um, and it didn't really, it wasn't really uncomfortable even. It was just, I felt so much power coursing through me. I could feel where Kara was. I could feel that we we're getting ready to transition her being into this world. And um, I'm just really excited to have that experience to really uh, know deep inside me um, how empowering and comfortable that experience is meant to be. And I'm really excited to bring through more information about that intend to stay in the new age community. I feel like I came into the new age community and I grew up in the new age community, but the Earth Star Academy is really here to bust people out of the new age. Okay. We're busting people out of the new age glass ceiling because we got shit to do. Like I'm here to revolutionize the culture of birth on this planet for all of humanity. So I'm going to learn how to communicate to humans by embodying love, by being a generally positive force, um, by being a um, benevolent and pl pleasing person to be around and to hear from. Um, and, you know, I have so much love for humans and human civilization. And I have so much desire to um, just build, build a beautiful civilization through our knowledge from our home planets. That's what we came here to do. So, uh, yeah, I really do feel like the Earth Star Academy is where we you know, bust each other out of the new age glass ceiling and, you know, all the hijacking that is happening. I mean, God, I know there's so much hijacking because we're here to bring in a new world. So of course the cabal or the elites or whatever, whoever you want to call them, they had a plan to stunt our growth. And that has been the new age. And so on that note, I'm ranting at this point. I love you guys so much. The term new age was coined by George Soros. I did not know that, but I'm not surprised. I mean, it really pisses me off, right? Um, fascinating. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. I mean, I, I literally just see this, this film. It's like a fly trap, right? And 
people, we are so hungry for spirituality when we're waking up out of this false matrix. We're so we're just starving for true spirit, for anything that is beyond the 3D that we just get smacked into the flytrap of the new age. And I'm very stoked that, you know, I personally never really resonated with any of it. When I looked at those ascended masters, I was like, that is a gift shop, you know, photocopy of who I know to be a true vibration of an ascended master. And so um, I, I feel rather upset that, you know, this system has deceived so many people and I'm ready to just bust some people out out of here. And then I'm, I'm on off into the world, off into the real world, off to do my human thing that I came here to do on this planet. And I hope to um, do it with you. I hope that we get to play together. I hope that we get to awaken humanity and show them what life is meant to be like and have so much fun as we do it. Uh, our mission on earth is going to be so incredible. And I love you so much. Um, on that note, um, bye family. Send, send, me, uh, send me lots of love for this journey upcoming for me and my family. And I can't wait to be back with you renewed at a different time. Bye for now.